you're now tuning in to the Ambitious Views podcast, where we share unique perspectives on storytelling within film and television from the past, present, and future. We're here for a good time, not a long time. So let's get to it. Hey, welcome back to another episode of the Ambitious Views podcast, your favorite podcast with your favorite host, Corrigan and... Blaze, what's up, everybody? How are you, Corgan? I'm doing all right. How about you? Pretty good, pretty good. Ready for the month of August to be over. And I know what you're thinking. Mm. August mm. ain't started yet. Well, by the wow. time people listen to this, it has, but yeah, I'm ready for it to be over. <laughs> Why are you ready for it to be over? I'm tired of orientations. You sure? Yes, my I probably won't have a voice in the next few weeks. You look okay to me. I I, I think I think you're doing a, a pretty good job. I think you can keep. Well, going. thank you. I appreciate that. I'm gonna I'm gonna let uh your uh your uh job of employment or your place of employment know to uh you you want to add on two more orientations. Oh, okay. now you you're doing too much now. Too much? You sure? Too much. Right. Dial it back. Down the back. All right. Well, y'all, uh, we getting into it today. Yes, we are talking about Deadpool and Wolverine, aka Deadpool three. All right. So uh, we're gonna be jumping in that today for the real take, and we got a new game for y'all. You know, we retiring, or we gonna put you know this or that in the retirement home for right now. You know, don't mean it can't come out. We, we just want to switch it up a little bit um, as we get ready to go into, I, I feel like, a newer season of the entertainment uh, season, if you will, with new show, with shows about getting ready to end, movies getting ready to take a small break and lead into some more films, and school getting ready to start, all this stuff like that. So we got a new one for you all, and of course, we got to do our watch list, uh, but we're going to go ahead and get into this new game, all right? So I told Blaze, I was like, hey... I was at this event and we played this game, Aja and I, and I was like, I think I wanna, I think I wanna play this this game or whatever like that. You know, now we playing around with the name. We think we like it. Really, I just typed something down and Blaze Gilgan, and I was like, we just gonna go with that. That works. So <laughs> So with that being say said, the game is called What Is This? All right. And basically the premise of it, we're gonna be naming Taking turns each episode, we'll name three person, places, things, and and anything else that we say is legal. Um, and the person has to guess um, what movie or TV show is connected to. All right. So, Blaze, are you ready to play What Is This? I am. Let's go. All right, so I'm going to give you three real individual names, and you got to tell me what show do they act in without so, you. I have to tell you what show each of them act in. It's not going to be the same no. show? Yeah, it's going to be the same show. Oh, okay. okay. It's going to be the same show. Don't be cheating now. You know, keep your hands on the screen, you know what I'm saying? so. <laughs> but anyway, Quincy Isaiah... And we have, make sure I get the name right, Adrian Brody. Sorry if I mess up the names. And John Riley. What is the name of this movie or TV show? I only know one thing that Adrian Brody has been in other than, well, actually, no, I'll take that back. I know two things. So I'm going to go with Entourage. That is wrong. Hmm. The TV show is Winning Time. Oh, I think I'm getting Adrian Brody mixed with somebody else then. Ah, uh, yeah. Because Adrian played Pat Riley. Yeah. <laughs> so, His yeah. name is Adrian Brody. Yep. yep, yep, yep. I thought that so, other guy's okay. name was Adrian Brody. Okay. And then the other two names I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have guessed it from them. Yeah, so the um 
uh shoot um john riley played dr bus and quincy played uh magic johnson his name is quincy quincy brother quincy that's not that's that man name <laughs> wait a minute i thought that man name was something else oh i'm getting him confused with somebody else too oh goodness um I don't know why I'm getting him confused. You know the guy who played in um have you ever seen Power? Yes. Um the guy who played um 50 Cent Son. I know exactly what you're talking about. Um uh what other movie? There, I think his name starts with the S. Um let me do house. He was in house, the recent house party. No, he was in White Man Can't Jump. The new right, one. yeah, with um, Jack Harlow. Uh, hopefully, I'm saying his name right. Sinqua. Walsh. Yeah, I don't know why he came to my mind when you said winning time, but mm-hmm. yeah, that man name is definitely Quincy. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Quincy. Brother Quincy. All right, but yeah, that's how the game goes. Oh, so. okay. I said entourage because his name is Adrian, but that is not the same last name. Uh, so I wasn't completely off thinking yeah. about the names and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You went you went too far, but you were far enough away. Yeah. But that's uh, okay. Yeah. I'm gonna get you next week. I'm okay. Get you next week. I right. right. we gonna see. It's still zero to zero right now. All right, zero to zero. But anyway, uh, what's on your watch list? So Netflix has, in in lieu of the Olympics that are going on right now, Netflix released um, a couple of documentaries about some of the athletes. One of them, Sprint. Um, It's about basically all of the track stars that you should be watching um, at this Olympics. And so... um, and and from various countries, from America, from Jamaica, um, from Italy, and I want to say somewhere else too, but I can't remember. Maybe France. Um, cool. But it was. I really liked it. I I like the Olympics. Um, mm-hmm. I usually only pay attention to like gymnastics, basketball, and volleyball, um, and a little bit of swimming. Um, but I never really watched the track and field stuff. But watching this documentary has me excited about the track and field portion of the Olympics this this year. You know, getting to learn about the different athletes, like who they are as people, what their motivations are, and just getting to learn more about like what that track, like what they have to do to become a track star to get to the Olympics and stuff. That was really interesting. Okay. Okay. It was just like it was like six episodes and like the last episode at the end, it was like to be continued to be continued. So I'm guessing um, once the Olympics are over, they'll release some more episodes about their experience at the Olympics. That's smart. That's yeah. really smart. Yeah. No, yeah, it's really. Been on my watch list. Yeah. It, it's been on my watch list. I didn't know that it followed that many people. I thought it was just going to be uh, just locally here. That actually makes me want to watch it. Uh, even more because I was kind of skeptical about it to be quite honest because just like I'm already kind of watching them a little bit especially when they were going through the trials and competing to represent mm-hmm. uh, but even that I feel like that's pretty cool yeah no I that's what like made me like it even more when I was like oh we're going to hear from um, the Jamaicans we're going to hear from this person this person like it's it it really it really um, captures the spirit of the Olympics because, you know, the Olympics is not just about one country. It's about all the countries coming together right. to compete. And so it was kind of cool right. for them to create a show that does that. Most definitely. Um, and then another documentary that they did um, is Simone Biles Rising. That mm-hmm. one is about the gymnastics scope, Simone Biles, and her... So. I don't know if she was like, I know she was doing, so during the Tokyo Olympics, she was doing like a documentary through Facebook Watch, you know, when that was a thing. And so I don't know if the footage that they're using from 2021 was supposed to actually be used for that, 
or if she was already always going to do something with Netflix. Um, but the doc that documentary, it doesn't really, it's not very linear. It kind of goes back and forth and stuff. So it'll talk about her training now, then it'll go back to 2021, her going to the Olympics, what was going through her mind. Um, and you really kind of see her thought process as it led up to, you know, her doing that vault where she basically almost killed herself um, and then had to drop out the competition. Right. So I thought that was kind of cool to have that footage and it make it really makes you think about how documentaries like it makes you think like do do the people that are doing the documentary, you know, the subjects as well as the directors and stuff, like do they realize they're capturing something that like means something that's great, you know, like that's gonna be influential. Like do like do you know what's about to happen next that's gonna make this so important? So that right. was kind of interesting to watch because like y'all are filming this not knowing how the Tokyo Olympics is going to go. Um, mm -hmm. And so it was kind of cool to see her, see that experience and then see her kind of, you know, improve on her mental health and all those things. And then I want to say that would also kind of end it like a to be continued too. Um, so they'll probably have some more episodes after smart. this Olympics. Yeah, very smart. Yeah. Yeah, I know that uh, I haven't seen that one because <clears throat> that was recently posted, what, probably like last week, maybe? Um, like two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Yeah, I know she had another one um, that I've always been interested in checking out, but I it's always been on multiple watch lists that I've seen in, on the streaming service, but I've never taken out the time to finally go ahead and watch it. So, um, but that's interesting. And then obviously I've been watching the Olympics, which man, I gotta tell you, Corgan, it's a full time job. It is a full time job. You know, you wow. you you check in at like six o'clock, maybe eight o'clock in the morning, and then you can check out about four o'clock. <laughs> Cause the Olympics started on Saturday, last Saturday. And so, you know, obviously I had the time to watch it. Yeah. I got that's literally what I did. I woke up watched it and then ended it by four o'clock I was done for the day you know I and mean, I know most people wait until prime time to watch but honestly watching it live is really better because the prime time edit they jump around too much between all the sports and when you watch it live like I can watch gymnastics and then if they go on like a commercial or have a break or a dead time I can turn that off throw on some basketball like something like that but it's been really great. I, the sports I've enjoyed the most, um, gymnastics and beach volleyball. Like, beach volleyball has been good. The the women are killing it. So I'm very intrigued to see um, if they'll make it to the end and, and get gold. It's two um, women's team that are competing. And then the, the indoor volleyball, it's also good. They had a match today against Serbia that was, like, super close. Super close. It was good. And then basketball was good. Rugby. Never watched rugby before in my life, but hey, I, I was like, okay. <laughs> I checked out a couple of clips last night. And I was like, yes. I'm still learning, but it seems mm -hmm. like it's easy to follow. But this is really, I it's like physical. It. It's very oh, physical. Really yeah. I think I'm going to go back and watch some of the replays because um, they're done now. Um, the U.S. women got bronze, which was the first time they ever been on the podium, which is great for them. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to check out some rugby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It seems it seems very entertaining slash cool to, to just see, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like, it's almost like rugby give me the vibes of like the moments that you look forward to seeing watching football. But you constantly mm -hmm. in there with rugby. So um there's certain things I want to learn about it, how things are and yeah. why they keep from an angle, what's the difference between an angle and straight on, stuff like that. Yeah, I definitely want to learn some of the rules. Cause like the way that the US women won bronze, I'm like, if the time went out, then isn't the game over? Like yeah. so is it okay that the game continues because it was a play that was start already in play? You know, so I I, I yeah. wanna know like that stuff too. Yeah. But yeah, the Olympics have been pretty good. I think track starts August second. Okay. Um, I recommend if you're into the Olympics, get Peacock. It's like they have their um platform for the Olympics is amazing. Um, they have their own little hub for it. 
It's great. Love it. Yeah. I I've been telling people this week I need to just go ahead and down download it on my phone because mm-hmm. I want to watch it, but it's just like it's it's an out of sight, out of mind thing. Mm-hmm. I, just catching somebody sharing updates or whatever like that on their story. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna download the app on my phone. So <clears throat> I, you know, I'll be able to pull it up on my phone or maybe you know, like my laptop, I bring it to work and so I'll be able to let's have it on while I'm working on stuff or whatever. So but yeah. Yeah. And then of course I've been watching them dragons. <laughs> You know, they had they had the dragon idol this past Sunday. Oh, <laughs> or no, no, I like the dragon draft. <laughs> oh, hey, I like that. I that like was, that. Yeah. Yes. Um, and then Stars has brought back the Serpent Queen for season two. Um, okay. so I've been watching that. And then the final season of Vikings Van Hella is on Netflix. And I've oh. been watching that. Oh, I forgot one thing. Um, Cobra Kai, the final season. I, I watched the first part of that. I still need to start the the series in general because <laughs> I'm definitely. It's a fun watch. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I mean to be quite honest and transparent, I didn't take it serious when it first came out because I'm like, okay, y'all doing a, a little bit too much. With no, they're the- definitely doing too much. Um. Watch it with like the same intentions that you watch Fast and Furious. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, I um because I was a big karate kid fan growing up. Like I saw them all, including the one that they used to play a lot on Disney when it was like I guess more modern in a sense, and Mr. Mm-hmm. Biagra was helping out a young lady that was dealing with some things, and so that one was really good too. Mm-hmm. Uh but yeah, like I was just like, oh, the remakes, just like, uh, I don't know, or the continuations, I don't know. So, um, but I've seen that a lot of people from back in the day are still included and in part of it. So, yes, that's so, yeah. really nice that they do that. They'll bring somebody from like all the various movies and stuff. Uh, yeah, yep, yep, yep. So, but I'm gonna I'm check it out. So, all right, so my list, uh, Watch Alkali, um, that ended, it started off very unique. You know, I'm not even going to lie. I was kind of wondering how it's going to go. Plus, I haven't watched a Star Wars-related show since Mandalorian 2, I think. I thought you watched that other one. Um with Rosa da- last name Dawson. Ro- oh. is it Ro- um 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 she it starts what, with the R. What is her name? Um uh, 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 Ahsoka. No, Ahsoka, I haven't watched yes. that. Yeah, I haven't watched that yet because apparently people are saying that Rebel is going to probably have some overlap, which I may research it, but have some overlap into the Ahsoka story. Plus, before I got to Ahsoka, I think Mandalorian 3 and Book of Boba Fett both came out right before. And so I think I need to watch those three things possibly before I watch Ahsoka. Mm-hmm. But um, but yeah, yeah, Rebels uh, was another animated show that came out after Clone Wars. I don't think it's on the same popularity level, mm-hmm. but say it is decent. But that's just something you know, especially with Star Wars. I just kind of like to know what's going on, or like if I need to be excited because somebody's included or they've been a part of some type of arc. You know, I like to know that. So, <clears throat> so yeah. But I think this has been the latest one, and I was more so excited about this because I knew this was going to be in the area of them trying to tell stories that happened years ago, um, mm-hmm. up to like possibly a hundred years ago or whatever like that, where, you know, you know, Sith wasn't as popular or they wasn't, they hadn't gotten to a certain level just yet, or it had been a while. And so uh, it was pretty interesting overall. It, it definitely, it started okay, but it de- definitely ended better um, the way they did end it, it maybe it definitely makes me believe it's gonna be 
a season two, but I don't know unless I've missed it. Um, I haven't seen that there, you know, it has been renewed, but I will say if they didn't, you know, which it won't be the first time, it'll be kind of not good that they didn't really push through, but I am interested to see if they do push through for another season, how they're going to do it. But I do feel like they set themselves up better for season two to where it'd be way better than this season. Like, you know, if it's a season two, I have a, I, you know, I feel a little bit better about how things went. Uh, I feel and, like it will be a season two because that it was pretty popular online and stuff. Okay, yeah, it wasn't as popular on my. I guess just because between that and Marvel to a certain degree, I try my best not to see anything or whatever like that and get spoiled. Um, yeah. and so, so I, I mean, I believe it, you know. But and and I know there was mixed reviews on if people liked it or not. But I do feel like, especially who was revealed, well, two people that was revealed at the end. I feel like it's worth at least trying one more season um, and stuff. So, uh, and like you said, I've been watching them dragons um, just because <laughs> we're going to be jumping into Deadpool. I'm not going to say too much about it, but um, it's definitely been an interesting season. <laughs> um, yeah. And stuff. So I'm, I'm definitely interested to see how this last episode is going to be. And all I'm going to ask mm-hmm. is that, you know, even though I think the times, times are already out, but I need at least an hour and a half. I feel like. Um, <laughs> I don't think they're gonna give us that much. <laughs> no, they not. So, but yeah, um, started Jujutsu Kaisen. We watched one episode. We kind of did it randomly, so we only watched that one to kind of get our feet wet. It is. So you did just like I did. <laughs> <laughs> it is interesting. Um, mm-hmm. I will say I don't know if I'm biased, but I they kind of jump on into it a little bit, like. Um, Attack on Titan does, but I think it feel like, it's like, but the re it's like I'm curious to see what's gonna happen next, just because it is a cliffhanger. But and what they showed at the beginning of it, which I kind of got confused about. But uh, oh wait, y'all stop, y'all. So y'all just stopped at episode one. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, um, so yeah, so I mean, definitely want to keep on watching to see where it's gonna go. Um. I'm intrigued. I will say that much. I'm intrigued. So, um, but we'll see. Have you only watched two episodes too? I think I watched two or three. Two or three. I want to say three. Three. But okay. that was like back in May. Oh, snap. Okay. Got you. Well, you know, um, uh, what you call it? Say he's waiting on you to watch his uh, recent season. Who is which one, Carly? Um, <laughs> say young man name. Um, Tanjiro. Tanjiro said he misses you. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm gonna have to get him up. <laughs> oh man. Um, but yeah. So Jujutsu Kaisen. I started the shot. I only was able to watch one episode. Um, definitely the way it ended. I definitely am curious to see how the rest of it will play out. I wasn't expecting for particularly one thing to happen, but I do like the writing style so far. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I'm curious, is there going to be more of that type of writing style throughout the show? Um, Aware of like that or, you know, what it will be. So, but I did enjoy the first episode, which you can watch that on uh, Showtime, I believe. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. Um, Ready to love. This is my new reality show for you, Blaze. <laughs> um, Will Packer produced this a while back when Oprah Winfrey uh, Network uh, was still going strong. I'm not quite sure where, it's in, where it is now, as in, is it fully still on its own, or is this more like a package deal um, with uh, Max uh, slash Discovery or whatever like that. But um, it's, uh, it's originally an own reality show uh, network, uh, our own reality show. And basically it's about couples that's, you know, a little bit older, pretty much thirties and above, or like late twenties and above that's basically ready to find love. And the thing, you know, at first I was kind of curious about the first or the second episode, but I think it was like, maybe like how the second episode was going to be. Cause it was kind of drawn out, but basically they put, you know, a whole bunch of men and women in the house, 
they going around mingling and talking to each other, whatever like that. And basically, um, the women start off by deciding who they want to eliminate as a whole. Yeah. And so then it means there's a odd, there's not an even number of men to women ratio. Mm -hmm. And basically it gets to the point that women get the vote all the way down to three men. Dang. Now the script flips to where the three men start dating the more of the women mm -hmm. that they have a relationship with, and now it's dwindling down from there. Yeah. And so, um, but see, yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, I really like it for it to be um, as old as uh, Love is Blind or a little bit older. I feel like the quality of the production is really good, pretty much up to the same level as uh, uh, Never Ever Met, you know, to a certain degree. But I really love it. And then the thing I was telling Audrey that I really like about it is like, I don't know if they're going to continue this because we only watching the first season and I think they have eight seasons, but it's like, hey. right. It is based in, in uh, Atlanta. Uh, but one of the things I really like is that it's, it's a blend of just like, we just not on this show. Like we go to our regular jobs and then we come and film. Cause it was a couple people like, yeah, I just got done with work or I just came here from work or well, I got to leave y'all like, and I got to go to work, but I'll see y'all later. So I really love <laughs> The real reality, the true reality of, yeah, I'm in this TV show, but I'm also still. Yeah. Right, right, <laughs> it ain't paying the bills. <laughs> right, 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 right. So I really like it. It's, it's really cool. Uh, this is definitely going to get get it be a good passive uh, watch for us. And I don't have it on here because I haven't been putting things that I'm just looking forward to. But you know, they announced uh, Love is Blind UK. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited for that. So, but, uh, but yeah. Um, Blaze, I've been wanting to finally start back. Had students talk about the boys, part of crew for my documentary that I'm producing. Uh, been talking about the boys, and I tried season three because you know I'm a big fan of Jensen from his time in uh Supernatural, and I know well, he you ain't gonna be a fan of his character. <laughs> well, I'm gonna just say this. After ten minutes, I had to turn it off. The first episode of season three, I wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. I wasn't ready. And so we're going to try. <laughs> I was not ready. I thought the first few minutes of the first episode of the first season was pretty day wild, but dog, go. It's just like, what is this? Yeah. Yeah. They turn up. So I'm on. I'm on. It's the boy for you. It's the boy, so and I've heard it. It gets even more out there, so I I wasn't ready. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I get it. I get it. Yeah, yeah. I can, I can, I can handle it now. I just wasn't. Re it was on the day I was just like, I'm just gonna turn this on. Mm -hmm. Wow, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm two seasons behind, you know. So, well, I guess three technically with uh G uh Gen V, right? Mm -hmm. Oh so, mm -hmm. yeah. So I was like, dang, you know. But anyway. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna try it again so I can finish it off because I Yeah, but you gotta be in the right headspace. <laughs> yeah, I, I wasn't. I was not, you know. Um but yeah, and then the last thing was uh I watched the documentary Hitsville, the making of Motown, which was super good. Uh most of it for, was from the perspective of uh uh Barry Gordy and okay. um uh, and um yeah, that's his name, Barry Gordy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was from his perspective, along with uh, Smokey Robinson, I did not realize that he was one of the first pioneers of writing a lot of songs and being one of the main artists. Uh, oh, really? The... Yeah, yeah. Did you know yeah. that? Mm -hmm. Did you not watch the Temptation movie? I, you know, the times that I watched it, I think I was too young to know what was going on past a lot of people dying and being on drugs. I'm gonna need first of all, that's my favorite movie. So I'm gonna need you to rewatch it so you can grasp everything. Man, ain't nobody for you, Otis. <laughs> you talking. So, but no, I mean, I've all it it was definitely between that and the Jackson Five American Dream. It was always those two that was rotating or whatever. But I'm gonna have to go. I remember Smokey singing at the end at a funeral. I definitely remember that. that oh my gosh, yes, you need to go rewatch it because yes, Smokey was um he was pretty what's the word I'm looking for? Um he was pretty important for like their 
like them getting their first big hit and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And they talked about that. Uh, he, and I forget his name, was another writer <clears> slash <throat> team or whatever. But I really enjoyed it, you know, especially, you know, Barry Gordy talking about how he used how the motor companies and stuff like that, how he used the approach of how they put their assembly together slash business together and how he applied that to the business and development of uh of them, you know, talking about, you know, Stevie Wonder. Like I knew he started young, but I didn't know he started at around eleven or twelve years old. Mm -hmm. Um, and so it was really great to get that perspective as, as well. And then I love the whole conversation, which I feel like is a lost thing in a lot of a lot of music industry now is uh development. They have development department. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was uh it was a lady who help develop the artists and, and literally they it was like a thing like have you checked in with the development have you done your thing and i'm not even going to spoil who it she was a part of a group at the time uh, but later on became more popular individually but it was one person who actually they said had to go through the most development because they struggled Diana. okay all right so <laughs> um, but anyway um <laughs> Let's let's go to the real take. Since maybe you don't need to watch the documentary. No, but, I mean uh, I I I know me some Motown. You know, okay. we we watched a lot of the of the Temptation movie in my household, and my daddy he told me enough about Motown. So I know me. I know some things. So I got things. Okay, cool. <laughs> Well, Sister Blaze, uh, this is the real take, and we jumping into Deadpool and Wolverine. Um. What was what was going through your head when the movie first started? Um, I was okay. So when the movie first started, I was like, "Oh yeah, Logan did die. Hey, how is this movie going to be Deadpool and Wolverine? Are we going back in time? Like, what is what's about to happen?" And I was like, "Oh, it's probably just going to be a different um." variant of Wolverine like right. that, that obviously has to be it but I immediately fell in love with like the soundtrack like them doing the fighting scenes the bye 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 that was so funny and creative I love that yeah yeah the whole routine like I was literally dancing with them in the mm -hmm. <laughs> bye, 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 you know bye, bye. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. uh was it expected to be as, as gruesome as it was you know what because of the dance the gruesome kind of just left. Just waiting one I was paying other. more attention to the dancing than like all oh, the killing and stuff. I was like, oh yeah, there's that blood. And stuff. Also, we went yeah. to go see the movie um, in IMAX, and that was my first time ever watching. Oh. Is, is IMAX in three three D the same? No, so IMAX is supposed to be like because you use a special camera. Um, okay, so yeah, that was my first time seeing an IMAX movie. I don't want to do that again. It's it's too close. Like uh stuff coming at me, don't like that. Um I don't like when I have to put stuff over my glasses. So won't do IMAX anymore. But put stuff over your glasses. Put stuff over my glasses. You have to put the glasses over. Oh, you watch it in 3D. The IMAX, yeah. Oh I don't know. Yeah, you watch it in 3D. So 3D stuff come at you and stuff. Okay. Yeah, I can't do 3D. No, no, not for me. But yeah, IMAX is, I haven't looked in, you know, into it specifically, but it's, I get, I don't know how expensive it is to a production, but people literally use IMAX cameras. Um, and then that goes along with marketing for your film because, you know, mm -hmm. you can choose IMAX theater. So I guess it's like if you watch it at a theater that has a really great IMAX uh, room to show yeah. your film. I mean, they had us in an IMAX room. That's so I don't know oh, if it was okay. 3D or okay. IMAX or what. Okay, so it was probably both of them then. It was probably IMAX. Well, it 3D. was a little bit much. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of, uh, have you seen some of those TikToks and videos about people going to see for, uh, the new Twister movie in 4D? Uh-uh. Man, man, I saw, I don't know how true it was unless people was playing, but it was like people were sitting in chairs and the chairs are just rocking. And oh, no. Nah. So it's almost like a roller coaster movie type of experience type of thing or whatever. So, but uh, I can definitely tell it was filmed for 
3D because it was certain objects that was just in certain areas or would come at yeah. the screen. I was like, yeah, it's definitely 3D, but mm -hmm. but uh, but cool, 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 cool. Um, yeah, like Wolverine, you know, Logan died. That cancer mm -hmm. got him, you know, and uh, he was getting real raggedy in X23, which is interesting. We're gonna get to that. Um, and X23 wasn't there or whatever like that, but like. Also, can I make a confession? I haven't seen Logan. <laughs> Sorry. And the only reason why I didn't watch Logan was because I also didn't watch the movie right before it. I think it was, well, maybe I did see Wolverine um, origin, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to take this long break. I really feel like you just cussed me out in my face. I really feel like, <laughs> like if I had kids, you was like, forget your kids. That's how that really just made me feel right now. How in the oh, world I watched the best mutant slash X Men film that's ever been made? Okay, it was The Wolverine. I didn't watch The Wolverine, and so I didn't watch Logan. You didn't have to watch any of them. Just watch Logan. Well, X-Men Origin Wolverine was good. Well, Logan is extremely better. I heard it was depressing, though. It's not depressing. That's how great it is. The movie came out in 2017. It's 2024. I've gone this long without it. I think I'll be okay, you know. What? It's a great film. I'm not knocking that it's a great film. It's just it's it's past the time for me to watch it. Yeah. It's not. It is. That means you didn't even know the significance of X-23 walking up and finding it. Oh, no, I knew that. I've never watched the movie in full. I've seen clips of it. I've seen it when it's like on, on FX, stopped and watched it for maybe 25 minutes. I've never watched the movie all the way through. I couldn't tell you the plot. All I know is he dies at the end. And I know that he was with 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 the, um, the X-24 basically throughout the whole movie. I think Charles shows up at some point. So I know like a little bit about the movie. I just don't know like the what? Oh my gosh, <laughs> man. It's you definitely missing out on that one. That is so good. It is extremely good. It's better than all the X-Men. It's real good. The only thing that's close is Days of Future Past. Love Days of Future Past. Now that's depressing. I mean, perception. <laughs> anyway. Anyway, back to Deadpool and Wolverine. Oh my gosh, man. Oh, that just hurt my feelings. Anyway. Um, so how did you like what what was going through your mind or wherever like that when it came to them kind of clarifying what world or what universe he was a part of versus what he wasn't like did that kind of clear up some things for you and stuff like that or whatever um going through as far as him going to 616 which is mainly our world that we've been watching as opposed to the the universe he's been on yeah i understood i was that mm -hmm. i think for me it was just like like the what is it, TVA, and them talking about the sacred timeline and stuff. I was like, I feel like these are words I should know, but I oh, don't know what y'all oh, talking oh, about. Oh, hold on. You didn't watch Loki? You know I didn't watch Loki. <laughs> That's why I was like, these are words that I should probably know, but I don't know them. I wish they would stop saying these words, but like, let's go. 
Let's say the timeline or whatever. <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> you know what? My only pass on that is the fact that technically how things worked out, this movie happened before Loki. Okay, well, that's good. I mean, he there was one line where he was like, Loki season two, episode 15 or something like that. Yeah, it, it was at that moment when he said that too that I was like, so dang, watching them shows really matters, huh? <laughs> and then I thought, actually, it doesn't matter because I can watch this movie and still understand what's going on. So I win. <laughs> oh, no, you <laughs> just Blaze. Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> No. <laughs> then how you just That's... sitting there chill? Like, this ain't no. No, man. Gosh. I mean, I went to the movies, too, with people who hadn't watched it either, so oh. we was all in the same boat. Just sitting there. Clueless. Well, I wasn't clueless. Yes, you I... were. I wasn't clueless. I was just like, these. You, he's saying everything he's saying, he's saying it in a way like, oh, people should know this as opposed to introducing it to us. And so I was like, oh, I should probably know these words, but I don't. So let me let me use context clues, which I did. So I wasn't clueless. Gosh. Yes, out of all of the stuff Marvel's put out and claiming that the shows would connect with the movies, this was the only movie that actually connected with the TV show. Outside of when, whenever uh, the next Captain America movie come out, um, it will connect to where Falcon, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. No, yeah, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. That will connect. I'm gonna and let you know right now. I'm not watching that. <laughs> I'm not a Captain America fan. I'm not either, but you know I... what? I take that back. I'll consider watching it. I'm not saying that I will watch it. I'll say I consider watching it because the new Captain of America is black. <laughs> and that's the only reason why I will go see it. Oh, well. But I'm not watching the show. How about when you working on something, you just turn the show on in the background? Oh well, I told my daddy when he's done with the acolyte, I'm I'm canceling Disney Plus. <laughs> he's the only person that watched Disney Plus. I well, haven't hey. opened Disney. I haven't opened Disney Plus up since maybe March. <laughs> and apparently, you behind on things, madam. <laughs> I'm not behind. I'm only I'm, I, I'm only behind. If I choose to engage. What, what is going on here? <laughs> I'm not behind. Well, I ain't gonna lie. I saw this side note. I saw this new deal <laughs> where you get Max, Disney, and uh, Hulu for a good price. And I think we're going to invest. Okay. And that there. So maybe y'all should do that. Because I know you're going to keep Max. And I know you're going to probably keep Hulu. My brother gets Max for free. No, I'm just playing. He don't get it for free. <laughs> you mean you get it for free? I mean, we oh live together, gosh. so. I, I am sorry, y'all. I am sorry. I don't know if maybe Blaze has just had a long week and she's just acting out right now. I don't know. You know, don't take <laughs> Anything. Yeah, maybe I'm lying about everything I've said for the past 10 minutes. <laughs> but anyway, like, shoot. Oh, okay, so basically... Oh my gosh, okay. So what were you? what was your first thoughts? How did you feel about the movie? 
so the way I felt about the movie is okay. We we back to the goreness. All right, I'm getting used to that. Loving the bye bye bye. Bye. <laughs> um, the whole montage moment that he's having with uh, Logan's bones, mm -hmm. wild, wild. That's so weird. Um, you said what? That's so weird. <laughs> very, very. Um, the other thing that I found very interesting, like I said, is them. There was a lot of clarification of the multiverse within this film that I really appreciated. Um, clarifying, hey, Avengers, Avengers that y'all are used to, Earthlings of 2024, that's in theaters right now, you're used to 616. And mm -hmm. y'all have actually been watching whatever universe I'm on, which is associated with Fox Network. And mm -hmm. honestly, I love the fact that pretty much this film ended up being about, being a, a, a tribute to Fox's work. You know? I know. I know that I I love that too. I enjoyed it. And I was like, I miss Fox Network. <laughs> right. You know, and so I I didn't see that coming. And right. the whole time, like you said, I was really interested to see like how is Wolverine gonna be tied in? Cause at first when he was getting ready to go into the grave, I'm like, oh, like, is this something that I don't know that's about to happen? He about to revive him? Mm -hmm. But I appreciate the rawness and the full throttle in it being rated R with the bones, acknowledging that people die. Mm -hmm. Like, he's gone. And, yeah. and, you know, I did appreciate that the TVA was included in this uh, based off of what we've seen with Loki because it's such a a bit is it was such a great storyline with Loki, especially the second season, that um I I enjoyed like seeing that type of perspective of that whenever technically that would have occurred in a sense. And so um but yeah so I think I think that was really dope. I really uh I really would say just kind of skipping forward I like some people I saw that they really didn't like how it was kind of more in they told the story in moments and mm -hmm. and stayed they didn't create as much depth to the the uh the narrative I guess you could say but personally for me I feel like that was on brand for me with Deadpool at this moment but what what was your thoughts on that I agree with that like that's kind of that's kind of like Deadpool that's, that's his thing so if they would have tried to like add more to it, then it would have, it wouldn't have felt like Deadpool. It would have felt like, cause this is Deadpool three, not Wolverine, Logan two or whatever, you know? So right. they had to be true to Deadpool's character, the um, tone of like all his movies. So, I mean, I was fine with it. Yeah. And it's like, you know, everybody knows and, and, all the jokes that was made in in this, everybody knows that, and, and a lot of and Marvel knows that a lot of people feel the same way. Like they're not, they they're they're not clueless of like the feedback on the projects that's been coming out in this last phase, and especially within that the is side, also true. Yeah, of the multiverse of madness. So let's take advantage of switching it up, giving especially the older adults something that they want, and and having fun with, it, especially with it being rated R, but. You know, I it's been a while since I've watched one and two of Deadpool. Yeah, same. And and I know that uh it I mean it probably had its dramatics, but I mean, you know, we want funny and it's not easy to be funny on TV or film anymore. Mm -hmm. So to highlight that and to keep it higher energy and keep it moving, I feel like it was good. And and you know, Logan, I feel like the reason why it was so great is because they did a great job, which is sometimes I feel like you get a lot more out of in a DC film. They did a great job with making a drama, a great superhero film, you know, yeah. and that's what made Logan really great. And so, but we've had that, which I feel like that's what it was showing. Like people have died. We moving mm -hmm. on and, and we, he knows his plot. He knows his universe is getting ready to be destroyed um so let's you know hey you go back and you and and you just try to find it and and i really the only thing that was kind of 
you know, threw me off about the montage is why did he not move forward with the Wolverines that he was coming across? You know, like, was it just because they fought off too much and he didn't want to deal with them anymore or whatever like that? Because even the Wolverine that we got, they fought, you know, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So they, what, what was your take on But that? I don't think he thought that they was going to fight like that because dude was kind of a drunk. So he probably thought that he was going to be able to tell him what to do. Mm -hmm. And as opposed to the other ones who, as soon as he met them, they was throwing hands, you know? So yeah. I, I think that he just thought, oh, he not trying to fight me right now. He wanted to right. die. So right. I'm actually doing him a favor. Exactly. That, that's that's what why I think okay. that um, he went with him and not one of the other ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see that. That, that definitely makes a lot of sense. I ain't gonna lie, like Henry Cavill's uh, Wolverine was very believable to me um, yeah i mean i knew i knew it wasn't um hugh jackman and so when he turned around i was like oh dang okay yeah like i'm like dude i didn't think about you being wolverine but hey 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 man we 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 might got something here you know well no i'm not gonna say all that you know how i feel about an x-men reboot i don't want it <laughs> well yeah i mean true i which we'll get more into that, but if they were, I think they they I pray that they don't. Consider. They should consider, maybe. Um, but yeah, um what did you think? I mean, speaking of Wolverine, like what did you think about when they when you finally when we finally got the whole concept of how we get Wolverine back and stuff like that? Like, how was that experience? you know, for you, you know, being able to be bringing him back and everything like that and, and going on this journey together. I mean, even though he's been playing Wolverine since like the 90s, it's always kind of refreshing to see him. Um, mm -hmm. And he hasn't been in one since 2017. So it was nice seeing him back on the screen. But even though it was, quote unquote, a different Wolverine, all the Wolverines have a, have a, um, like they have a similarity about them where they always have like a chip on their shoulder about something. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was, it was interesting to see like what this one was, especially since the one that we know died and was kind of able to let go of like all the stuff that he's been through in his life. And so it was kind of cool to see like a new one mm -hmm. um, and see where they would go with that. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. And also yeah. to see him in the yellow suit. Oh man! And the mask at the end, I did not mm -hmm. expect. That. It looked great. The suit looked great. The mask looked great. That definitely caught me off guard. Um, the only thing, man, I I kind of wish we would have been able to see it is his universe, you know, and what was really going on at that time. Yeah. Um, or if it would have played out to where you know we kind of would have got the same moment or I, I was, I'm not going to lie. I was expecting, I was expecting the old X-Man to return. That's what I thought. I was just... too. And I was like, Oh, y'all going all out. And then when they, when they did it, and I was like, so y'all not going all out. Y'all just going <laughs> that way. Okay. I, I, yeah. I still accept this. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I was really hoping for that, which I guess made sense because I guess whatever he did or didn't do, which I feel like to a certain degree, I wasn't quite clear on that. Um, right. Oh, I'm not clear either. Cause it's, did he go out to drink and he came back and they were dead? Did he go out to drink, came back and people were attacking him and he didn't do anything and just hurt them all died? Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, I was kind of confused about that. Um, that was the only thing. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't nothing that kind of threw me off and I thought about long, but I was just, you know, when when we got that cliffhanger to a certain degree, when him able to finally go back and be, you know, in days of future past and be with everybody when they were back alive and everything. Mm -hmm. it was just like, oh, man. Oh, like They great. went all out. <laughs> Yeah, they really did. Like that was somebody said the budget is a billion. Yep. <laughs> we may not be able to do this too much longer, so let's let's, let's get this. Go. 
And uh, but yeah, like I, I really I really enjoyed how they was able um to to bring him in because I was wondering how they was gonna do that and not make mm -hmm. it corny. And mm -hmm. it definitely made a lot of sense. Um, and not bring him back to life. Yeah, yeah, not bring him back to life. Like it it definitely like, hey, it's like Ryan Reynolds was like, hey, y'all been claiming y'all wanna do this multi this um, you know, multiverse of madness or, you know, um multiverse like thing. And it's like, you know, let, let me play around with the idea. Let me do it. And I really enjoy how they went about that. And so I did too. Um uh, it was easy to follow. It made sense. It wasn't cringy. I, you know, get the whole concept of it, all this stuff like that or whatever. Um, and it's just a teaser and a and a I guess a nod to Loki uh series about like, you know, with the TVA and everything like that, because that's technically was supposed to happen, but you know, we hadn't seen them since, you know, Loki. And that's, you know, what technically is supposed to happen with these things. Wait, was the TVA in X I mean not X Men in Spider Man? Uh the cartoon? Mm mm. The no. last movie. Mm mm. Why not? Because didn't he mess with time? He did. It would have made sense. It would have made sense. But maybe, maybe they didn't track it. But I don't know. I I don't know about that one. Maybe they didn't track it because he was dealing with magic, possibly. Okay. Okay. Because, yeah, because... Uh, mm, well, technically, I don't think... I think Loki... Well, I mean, technically, it, it was kind of like the stone that kind of did that. Um, I don't know. I think that's a mishap on their end. But I will say, I don't know if Loki season one had came out or it just came out right before. And I will say it probably would have been a little bit too complicated to have them into play. Uh, especially, you know, I would hope that you would see it, but it's a, it would have been too complex for them to be in it. Is uh, who produces Spider Verse? Sony. Okay, okay. And maybe that was part of it. Like they, like maybe the TVA had never been associated with a Spider Man story. Yeah, okay, that's probably maybe it. Please that in, you know, or you know, maybe it fit. Maybe they know it wasn't going to mess up anything or whatever. Because I think that's the other thing that's confusing is not mixing up universe hopping versus time hopping mm -hmm. you know because time travel like you know it's not it's not as sensitive as time travel but at the same time i think they don't like and i think that's the other thing too they don't they don't want you to be going back and trying to mess up time that's what it was right that's what it was the reason why they came out the deadpool because he messed with time okay as opposed to like in spider-man he didn't mess up time they just went from one door to the next okay so that's what that was. That's what that was. So, uh, but yeah, like, so, um, but yeah, I really did like how they pull it in. Uh, I haven't watched the Mad Max film all the way through, but when they got um, uh, pruned, I think that's the right word, with the stick or whatever, it, um, it really, them being in that desert type vibe, it really gave me, you know, uh, Mad Max vibes. I don't know if that was the yeah. motivation. I think so because um, Deadpool said it. It's like okay, Mad oh. Max or something like that. Oh, okay. See, I ain't even yeah. catch that. But yeah, it was kind of like that. And so actually, yeah, I knew what I was saying. And so, um, but yeah, like so, I enjoyed that. I did not realize that was a uh, uh, was it Pyro or Piro? Piro. Piro. I did not realize that was him at first until he got that fire, and I was like, oh snap! Same. I was like, oh. Yeah. yeah. And um now now on a scale of one to ten, how surprised or uh, were you about Chris Evans? I was like, oh Chris Evans. But I, I knew he wasn't there to be Captain America. Really? I knew he wasn't there to be Captain America. I thought he was gonna be like 
like a version of himself that never got to become captain, but I, I it did not okay. cross my mind that he was going to be um, Johnny from, from Fantastic Four. And so when that happened, I was like, oh, okay. That's yeah. smart. Yeah. That's smart. Yeah. And then I was like, is Michael B. Jordan coming up? Blaze, <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> you all on one tonight. Okay. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you know, I don't I don't think they can put two of them in there, man. But uh but yeah, they really caught me off guard. I appreciated that surprise too. Um I wasn't expecting that. Um I completely Yeah, they, they definitely surprised me. Yeah, like when he did the flame on, I was like, Oh, oh. okay. I see you. And mm -hmm. so I uh yeah, I was definitely caught off guard by that. Um, but stuff like that is also funny because it's like yeah. he played multiple superheroes. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But even like, but and even Ryan Reynolds, he what he was on the Green Lantern. <laughs> yeah, in DC, you know, and he mm -hmm. didn't play, you know, Deadpool in another way for Fox than he was. Yeah, Mar Mar oh, completely too. different. Yeah. yeah, and so, um, so yeah, so it was like it was very wild for them to do do that. I, I really think that was pretty cool. Plus, I think that was something people like look forward to probably seeing him again in it and everything. So, um, which is what kind of started kicking off where I I didn't realize like basically a nod to all of the Marvel characters that contributed to the success of mm -hmm. what is today's Marvel. And so, it um, was that like either. They didn't necessarily die on screen or anything like right. that. They just were never used again, you know? Right, exactly, exactly. And I don't know if Blade was a part of Fox technically or not. Um, I had to go look that up. But, you know, fast forward, I mean, hold on, back up. How menacing was Professor Xavier's sister? So creepy, so creepy. I was like... But also, I didn't like, that's one thing that I did not like. Mm -hmm. The um the part at the end, why would she want to destroy all the timelines? Like wouldn't it wouldn't it serve her better to have them just keep giving her people as opposed to giving everybody getting everybody at the same time? Because if you get them all at the same time, you're never gonna have anybody else to I guess feed to the thing or whatever. So it's like that's really not a good idea, honey. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think about the feeding part because I will say, I mean, you know, I can see her doing it out of spite because she felt like she had been manipulated or whatever. But at the same time, if that's the only way to keep the bust off of her back, excuse me, to keep the must off of her back, um, then technically, I guess that would make a lot of, you know, make a lot of sense of having more people down there to feed. Cause I know she kept on saying she didn't have to be in the real world. She liked where she was at. Right. Um, so that was kind of interesting, unless it was one of those things that she planned on pushing everybody there, but I don't even think that would have made any sense. So, uh, or she could have done that by that machine. So, but, but yeah, she was very menacing, but I do get that point. Um, now the other surprise, was you expecting them folks to come through that door? When they when uh X twenty three found uh Wolverine and Deadpool. Oh, I was not. I was like, oh. <laughs> hey, wait I a minute. In my seat. I, I did too. Like, I was like, oh my gosh, okay. And when I saw Blade, I was like, what? That's when no, I said Blade it. and Gambit. That's the ones that got me. Hey, I was not expecting Gambit. And on top of that, the rumor Gambit, like everybody was kind of hoping. Mm -hmm. uh, and wondering about it. I don't know if you remember that, but they was I, like... I remember that, because my brother yeah. was a big fan of Gambit, and so we talked about that all the time, like, it's going to be a Gambit movie, it's going to be a Gambit movie. He, and he used to tell me, like, how cool Gambit was. So I was like, yeah. I've been ready for a Gambit movie for maybe 15 years. <laughs> right, and like, and it ended up being the guy that everybody suspected it to be and stuff, so it was really cool. Um, it, yeah, it was nice that Channing finally got to be um gambit and he did a great job like the accent hey. was good the Real fighting good. everything like my um i went to go see the movie with um my other brother and he was like he was like oh gambit that dude I'm like yeah 
right? Oh, yeah, most definitely. You know, most definitely. And they do a great job with him in the TV series that just came out, too. Um, but, yeah, I've always liked him. It's like him and Wolverine were the ones mm -hmm. I really liked. Um, and more yeah. so, I just feel like definitely when it comes to Gambit, if they would ever invest, in my personal opinion, a TV show, mm -hmm. uh, I definitely would do Gambit, you know. Um, I don't know if people really care too much to watch a full feature of him, but they definitely, you know, he definitely is worth it. They could do like what they're doing with um, Peace Peacemaker. Mm. You know, like a like a eight eight episode mm -hmm. season each. Yeah. I think that would be cool. Be really good, really yeah. good, because his powers is just so unique. Anything that you touch it touch um, is an explosive. You know what I'm saying? So. And who randomly thinks of cars? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so yeah, I, I really liked, uh, I really liked that aspect um, a whole bunch. You know, um, the overall, shade though um, oh. from from Blade when he was like, "And there'll only be one Blade." Like, no, seriously, because I don't think this Blade movie is gonna come to fruition at all. Something, something always popping up each month about. This actor left the movie. This director left. This writer left. Just, just, just did it, y'all. It's only hey, gonna be one blade. You know, because they need a hey, Corgan. They need Corgan. They can get me, and I'm on a budget. I don't cost as much as these other directors. So right, you you, give my somebody, give my honey Corgan a chance. Just give me a chance. I promise you. You know, you might give me for a, a Dollar General budget, but it's gonna be a blockbuster. It's gonna, it's gonna be a gonna blockbuster. Be See, and they got to look at it like this. If they don't pay you a lot, then that's more money they can um, listen, spend on everything else. Listen, I can help. Man, we could probably get Denzel to be a villain, okay? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. We may nah, even be able to get um, Wesley Snipes back. Hey, listen. Need him. Need him. But he played into that because, you know, he had a little, you know, a tweet that was going out that was pretty big that was a... Uh, Basically saying, mm, mm, mm. like they trying their best, but you know, you know, whatever he said, it's you know what I'm me. saying? It's only him. So, but no, nah, it was really great. I really loved it. I really enjoyed the film. Um, I was Jennifer expecting- Jennifer Gardner looked um, oh, amazing she, too. She was in shape. Yeah. She, she was ready it for was. that. Like, it right. I, I bet when she got that call, she was, she went to the gym ASAP. Oh, yeah. She looked- she looked like she filmed that. Uh, she looked exactly like she probably looked better actually, um, than the original movie. But she had a little bit more muscle on her for this one. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Like she, she definitely did. Like everybody looked great. It wasn't forced. That's why I loved about the film. Everybody did their job. Like I said, I know some people was talking about more depth to the storyline, but it's just like why? Like we've had a very. I don't serious, think we need it anymore. You know, Infinity Saga. You know, it's been up and down with you know traction with uh, the multiverse. You know what I'm saying? And so it's just like, you know, let's he, let's, let's yeah yeah. I mean, it's Deadpool. Like all he needed was motivation. He wanted to save his friends. That's 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 all he needed. He don't need like this big long dramatic art. And that's what the movie was about because he tried to be more than that. And Happy was like, "No, nah, you you're okay. You can just you can just be you, you know." Yeah. And and that made you know a lot of sense, you know, when it came to yo. When he went to go see Happy, mm -hmm. and he looked back at the Iron Man thing. Like the Iron Man helmet, it was Tony Stark back there, right? In that picture? Yeah. I wonder, because I saw this other video where it was talking about what if that was like that because, you know, the rights to Spider-Man use it for multiple things. But what if it also was, uh, you know, covering him up because nobody knows who Spider-Man is anymore? That's a good point. Yeah. That's good continuity. About, yeah. I just thought about that. Happy doesn't know who he is. Wow. But uh, but yeah, like I, I just really love how they did it. I love how now they've also opened themselves up to being able to do some really cool things, especially with apparently there's gonna be a lot going on for Secret Wars with a lot of variants of each other, which based after the Comic Con. Um, that's still the goal. 
Mm-hmm. Did and you see the probate? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, we gonna see my theory on that. Quote me on this. My theory on that is that he is not gonna be the main doom. No. I definitely I, think that this is like um like a slight of hand type of thing. Yeah. yeah. I think that he's gonna be a doom. Mm-hmm. I feel like the main doom is going to be somebody else and we'll find out who that is in, in Fantastic Four. I agree. You know, yeah. I, I think that's what it is, you know, and I think it would make more sense just because um, you know, you you know, Marvel, Marvel knows. Marvel, like, they ain't new to this. Yeah, it, you know, it's been a little slope here and there because, you know, with different shows and stuff like that, but this movie alone has shown that they are fully capable of shocking you, catching you off guard, all this stuff like that. Because who would have thought Blade? Like, who mm-hmm. thought Blade would be in this? You know what I'm saying? Like, not in a million Blade years. Been talked about like mm-hmm. awesome. You know what I'm saying? And everybody looked good and everything like that. And so I really think that I this think was- that they have actually recast. Um, Kang the Conqueror, but they don't want people to focus on that because mm-hmm. that's that's that has been such a hot topic. Mm-hmm. But I think that they have, they're trying to figure out how to change the face. Does that make sense? Well, I don't think that they may still follow up with him to end it off, maybe. But the only reason why I don't think that. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't be surprised if he make it in, but some type of way is killed off is because the next film that's Doomsday now was supposed to be about Kane. Okay. Um, But it makes more sense now for it to be about Doom because apparently he was the orchestrator of Secret Wars. He was supposed to be a part of mainly putting that all together. Mm-hmm. And it makes it more interesting because I remember a few years back I heard that Dr. Doom was known to have, you know, one of the comic books created the Dark Avengers, which ended up leading to killing new killing off new or destroying New Asgard. Mm. Um, and so you know, that's led by the Valkyrie and stuff like that, too. Mm -hmm. So I think it's the perfect timing for it to be Doom because you already come out with Fantastic Four next year anyway, and everything it seemed like it's supposed to be Fantastic Four. Then Do you think that they're going to get it right this time with Fantastic Four? I feel like yes, because they're not squeezing a whole... That's the only Marvel film we're getting that year. Mm-hmm. And periods take time. And in my opinion, the period pieces that they... Moments that they have in Loki Season 2 were really good. And so... And that was even older than the 60s. So I feel that they can get it right. And they, they're going to be spending too much money on this cast to not get it right. Yeah. Um, so Because Cousin like, is in it. And he got an Emmy. So y'all better be paying yeah. Cousin. Exactly. And Cousin going to be Cousin. It. And so, and I didn't realize this, but somebody brought to my to, to my attention, uh, the new Superman and Fantastic Four are going to be opening back to back. New Superman. Yeah, they just finished. Uh, they wrapped up filming uh, this week. Who playing Superman? Uh, I forgot. He kind of. I'm not going to lie. I'm not taking away I'm from him. Sorry, I'm. I'm not old enough to be living in all these reboots. Like, <laughs> I'm tired of it. They made me sit through. Toby Maguire, Andrew Garfield, Tom Holland, Spider Man. Now it's already five, six, seven, some Batman and Superman. Is another one like? Yeah. Can we please wait twenty more years, ten more years? So here's the thing: the reason why, because <laughs> you'll probably have to be prepared for a new Batman, possibly, possibly. I feel like they can keep on going with this one, but I haven't watched the newest one. The reason why is because everything that's happened before James Gunn came over to DC, that's going to be considered other world. So everything here, even including possibly 
the last season, the first season of Peacemaker. So the new season of Peacemaker is supposed to be something possibly different. I'm sick of new. I mean, hey, it's James Gunn. He gave us a great Suicide Squad, and he gave us uh, a great uh, ending to the Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm with it. I'm just interested to see how it's all going to play out. I'm just not a big Superman fan. I'm not either. But I will say the last Superman, uh, Man of Steel with Henry Cavill, it was really good. I really liked it. And so I'm interested to see how this one is going to go. Um, just because James Gunn, the thing I like about him, he's done a great job with character development and yeah. working with um, with an ensemble cast mm-hmm. and stuff. And I feel like that's, for him to go from that to going to like one person, or one character, mainly to a certain degree, besides those who are going to be developing around him or she, I feel like it's going to be great. So, so yeah. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to be interesting coming up. I feel like this Fantastic Four is going to be great. I'm not a big Fantastic Four person. I don't know too much more outside of the movies and outside of the fact that they were, if not the first, they was definitely the first team. Uh, but they was it's going to be in the 60s, so it won't be modern, which I think it will make it more interesting within itself. Um, so we, we're going to see what happens, you know. Um, yes, you I, will. I, I think my main thing is just if I'm right about uh, this him not being the main uh, Doctor Doom, then how is he going to be portrayed in Fantastic Four? Because technically he was a scientist along with them in Fantastic Four. He and Reed were supposed to be good friends. So I'm interested to see how that's going to play out. Okay. So, but overall... Um, I really enjoyed it. My only thing is, number one, I wish I could have saw the X-Men that I grew up with. Mm -hmm. Um, And number two, I thought it was going to be something along the lines of so-called fixing things, because that was was a big um, thing, too, as far as is it going to be fixing some of the things or whatever. But Deadpool did exactly what it was supposed to do, in my opinion. That's why it's doing well at the box office. It's very entertaining, very funny. Um, if we don't get another Deadpool, which I feel like we got an Easter egg, we're seeing twice where he kept on saying you're not supposed to see this part of another mm-hmm. universe or whatever like that, or whenever this something happens. Um, I feel like, you know, this has been a pretty good trilogy or definitely it ended well. Yeah, and... I was gonna say if this is the final Deadpool, I think that this is a good ending. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean it it Seems like we're not going to get another Wolverine because he had to see what I see around again. He was like, no, but it's two things. I feel Never that say never. Never say never, one. But, but then also we, you know, X-23 is in the mix now. So maybe we could get an X-23 or something along with if X-23 survived, that means that Elektra, Gambit, and Blade are alive in their own universes. Mm-hmm. And so going back to what you said, maybe we will see another Blade again, you know, and maybe that will play into the multiverse maybe, or he will become um, the mentor of the new, you know, Blade, which I just kind of feel like it'll be interesting to see, you know, but but who knows? So we'll, um, see. we'll see. So, but other than that, this was a wild one, Blaze. <laughs> um <laughs> But uh, looking forward to seeing more. The next episode, we'll be jumping into them House of Them Dragons. Um, and, you know, we'll see how that that will end. It's very interesting leading up to it so far. Um, so I'm looking forward to see how this season uh, will conclude. My biggest theory is that it's going to be a big cliffhanger. That is my... Oh, massive. That, that, that is what I feel like is going to actually going to happen. So... Mm-hmm. Other than that, appreciate y'all for tuning in and hope y'all have a good rest of the day, morning, or night. And peace. Peace.